Hello, hello, friends, and welcome back to my channel, Seeds of Love. I'm your host, Monica, the Love Ambassador. Friends, I hope, I hope everyone's having a super, super amazing day. Good morning, good morning. I have my coffee here with my special cup. You know, I bought this cup um, actually, I think a couple months ago, and I've never used it. And I saw it and I loved it, but I never thought that this cup was actually going to like mean something so special to me today in the season that I'm going through. I love cups. I usually have cups that say, you know, beautiful stuff about God and inspirational words. But I saw this one, you guys can see. It's Cinderella, right, with her fairy godmother. And it says, miracles take a little time. It's right there, and there she is. So first of all, cheers. Hmm. Friends, that's exactly what I want to speak to you guys about, about miracles. Oof. Friends, if you serve Papa God like I do and love him, you know that he is the God that is in the business of doing miracles. Miracles, right? And a miracle is exactly that. Something that seems like impossible that there's no way right and that could become one day a testimony right and now it's my testimony that i could share with all of you for the ones who have been keeping up with my previous episodes you know i've been in a series of in a journey <laughs> of healing restoration forgiveness and that's where i left off i have been you know talking a little bit more in my podcast but I just had the chance now to to do this other video and now I understand why, right? And it's super amazing because, friends, <laughs> it's been three weeks, friends. Today, exactly three weeks, okay? Today, Wednesday, exactly three weeks that my heart was broken into a billion and trillion pieces, like, bad right and it's not the first time that it's been broken it's not the first time that i've gone through you know such horrific pain but this time around was like right like really hardcore pain and um now today i understand why i had to go through that and that's where i'm going to share with you all it happens to be that today papa guy did my miracle and I mean, it's a little cliche, but I feel like Cinderella. You know, this morning he actually, um, which is now my screensaver, my phone. It's Jesus putting the slipper to his beloved, which in this case is me, right? Um, you know, we think that we're looking for this, you know, Prince Charming, this man to come and sweep us off our feet, and we're gonna live, you know, happily ever after. That's not true, friends. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that there's not marriages that that yeah that will last and will and will you know live happily ever after but there's nothing perfect that's what i'm trying to say a man a woman a person a human being can never ever give a perfect love or even compare to a perfect love and when i say perfect i mean god's love god is the only one and not because a person doesn't want to it's because of the person we, as human beings, are not capable of. Because we're that. We're human beings, right? We are. We have a lot of defects and and maybe traumas and, and issues and addictions and all this stuff that's going on. That it's impossible to give another person or sometimes even to ourselves, you know, that perfect love. You know, that agape love, which is, comes from only from God, right? From Papa God. And, um... For the ones who do know me a little bit, I've shared my story that I've been a person all my life that I've been seeking and wanting and desperate for love. I mean, I wanted to always be in love, no matter what, no matter at what cost. I mean, I knew that inside I had so much love to give and I always wanted that love back in return. And um, it was failure after failure, disappointment after disappointment crying after crying breakup after breakup through so many years until about seven years ago you know eight years ago yeah eight nine years ago 
I learned to have a relationship with the Lord and I learned who my my best friend was which was is the Holy Spirit and my spiritual growth just started growing and growing and growing and my relationship with the Lord started becoming more intimate more intimate more intimate to the point that I no longer needed to date I no longer was seeking that love that that you know that um that acceptance in a man right well that's what I thought <laughs> so we'll get there and um and so I became strong you know and I I reunited with my love and 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 you know we madly fell in love again and we got married and all this stuff and and for the ones you know who don't know i am going through i say now you know through us you know my separation um doesn't mean that one day we might not reunite who knows i don't know god knows but what i know is that the plans that papa god has for me are amazing are always going to be good and perfect right and i realized in this stage guys was showing me that one of the reasons why i had to go through this horrific pain was because i was still idolatrizing um be wanting to be loved right um i was i was still i i was I, idolatrizing being a wife you know um at all costs at any cost and because of that, I became back to that orphanage stage, meaning, you know, the need of to be loved again, to be accepted, to be that perfect wife. Um, and but however, thank God that the whole time I also was was strong in my faith and I kept my relationship with the Lord. Right. And each day I seek the Lord more and each day more, and each day more, and each day more that i grew spiritually right while my other half was like spiritually basically right to the point that yeah we got disconnected because it says in the word that two people who are unequally yoked can be together and i went into a relationship and i went into a marriage knowing that we were unequally yoked yikes so of course, you know, then consequences come at the end um, because of my rebellious, because of my ignorance, because of my wanting to control the situation, because I wanted to be married, because I wanted this. And, and these are the consequences of being with a person who was unequally yoked, right? Doesn't mean the person is that amazing. Yeah, you know, the person could be super amazing. But if we're unequally yoked, right? So, however, Papa God gives us free will right and he's like okay do whatever you want <laughs> um you shall soon find out and not because he's mean it's just because unfortunately we have to find out the hard way right sometimes the very very hard painful way so friends um this was like i said three weeks ago and god papa god took me through a huge healing restoration forgiveness journey which really wasn't restoration friends it was better it was renewal today three weeks exactly i am a completely renewed person yes thank you jesus <laughs> but it wasn't easy <laughs> oh no it was not easy it was so tough that i thought i was going to literally die or i actually wanted to die and i've never ever had those kind of thoughts in my life and i those thoughts came to me to the point that I have been sober for almost 12 years, friends. And the and I had the thought of drinking. I mean, obviously, I know it's spiritual warfare. I obviously know that it was the enemy tempting me. You should go drink. You should go kill yourself. You, you're not good enough. You know, no one's going to love you. You know, you're, you, you did this. You know, these feelings of and emotions of guilt and of shame and of loneliness and of abandonment. Because I had so many abandonment issues starting from my dad and then triggering from all these other men that I tried to find love through, right? And I felt all of that times, a hundred times more in the pit of my stomach, friends, that I thought I had like a monster in there that, was, that wanted to like come out and it was just ripping me inside, literally, 
I mean, I don't know how else I could explain this pain. Some of you might understand. Some of you might not understand. But when I say it was the most horrific pain, it was horrible. But I went through, um, let's see, seven stages. And I'm going to briefly um, share them with you. And hopefully, if I could help that one person um get through the get through this horrific pain and through this journey faster than quicker because at the end of the day it's up to us in a way how fast and how quick and how we get through this and that actually gets me to um stage number one and this is again what i did with holy spirit him and i oh let me go back um i just disclosure you know um i was the one that moved out right away like um, within three days i had moved out um for for many reasons and um and one of them was because i needed to heal right by myself and the place that i'm at thank god he gave me and immediately holy spirit gave me a, a beautiful little tiny little efficiency for myself just for him and i to the point that i became crazy and wanted to at one point adopt a, a cat right like a little kitty because i wanted something to hold on to right i wanted something to like you know, care for and someone to love me a cat right and i, and I became the cat lady for a minute and and can you believe this is so funny because i was you know laughing with my pastor this morning about this and everybody else how how even the cat lady didn't want to give me a cat from the alley because she was like this girl's crazy you know what I mean? Because I was like, whoo, out of there. And I could even get a cat. And God was like, no, I didn't call you to get a cat <laughs> or get a fish. Nothing. Not even TV. Not even my TV's working, which is supposed to be working, doesn't work. He's like, zero, zitch. It's just you and I, bah, blank, right? Took me to that desert place. And it was amazing. I mean, it was horrible. It was amazing. So the first thing that I did, that Holy Spirit, I immediately did... Um, I guess because I've, I said again, I've already, I already had an intimate, strong relationship with the Lord. Okay, so um, I had gone through breast cancer with Him just a couple of years ago. Um, I have gone through so many other horrific breakups in the past, right? That immediately I made a choice, and that takes me to number one choice. I immediately made the choice to trust God in what um, just had happened. And what was about to happen meaning what I, what i was about to enter because one thing is what had just happened but one thing was what i was about to enter right which was now my new season of pain of dryness of loneliness of hurt of, of anger i knew i was about to enter that and i said holy spirit help me do this right I want to pass this test quickly. I want to, you know, whatever the enemy did for my harm and for harm, turn it for my good and our good because I know that's what you do. You're in the business of doing this. But I want to do this right. So I made a choice. And um, and um, I said, I trust you. And I, and I, and I grabbed on to my favorite verse, which is Proverbs 3, 5, 6, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, which means his will, submit to him, and he will direct my path. And my path at that moment and, 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 and everything in life is one step at a time. One step at a time. One tiny, tiny step at a time. One millisecond. One maybe one back. You know, maybe back and then one then one step again, you know? And then maybe back two, but then three steps ahead. You know, that's how I was like. I'm going to trust you, Lord, with all my heart. I'm not going to understand, try to understand what's going on because I don't. And I don't like it. And I, don't, I mean, I'm not. So I did that. So number one is choice. I made the choice. So it's our choice, friends, to understand what route we're going to take. At the end, we're going to have to get to the same destiny, the same route of healing. But it could take a miraculous three weeks <laughs> or it could take three years, 30 years or never right it's up to us it's our choice okay we always have a choice because it's our free will and then number two it takes us number two acceptance friends acceptance i chose to accept the horrible pain i was going through you know i gave myself grace um and i and i chose to accept um that i was going through a huge test of faith because i had been asking god 
to 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 do more for my ministry to, to take me to places to to do more for his kingdom and 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 asking for more means going through more and bigger and tougher tests right i also um chose and accepted the pain i was going through i mean how how even how crazy it might sound that pain remember that i explained to you how horrible it was i accepted it i was like i'm going to embrace this pain and 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 and, and understand and feel and how it feels because i want to learn from this because i know that one day i'm going to help someone say you know what i completely understand you trust me i know i felt it trust me i know it's horrible however but god you get it um and i also knew that this pain like i said was going to make me more compassionate person more empathy not only for myself but again for others right and he always told me the whole time i didn't understand why because i i love to journal and right before this happened i had bought this journal which is joshua 1 9 monica be strong and courageous do not be afraid for the lord your god as a matter of fact hello it's right here joshua 1 9 i have it tatted in my skin joshua 1 9 he's always been telling me to make sure that i have to be strong and courageous to not fear because whatever i go through whatever happens he is with me so i stood on that i stood on joshua 9 i knew i had to be strong and courageous obviously not on myself again it was you know and and i would come nights after work to my little place and i would take a shower and just cry and cry and and i was honest with the lord and where are you and i can't take this anymore and and i'm going and and, and and but then i knew that these tears that i was going through was also healing me inwardly as the tears was coming out and i was getting healed 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 and i chose to and i would ask him where are you are you sitting here with me are you over there where are you i want to see you i need to feel you i need your help i can't do this by myself give me one second mm. so that was my acceptance number three that brings me to surrender Ooh. i think this is one of the biggest and one of the most important parts of everything the surrendering part but this was the stage i got into you know after my choice after my acceptance i finally put the white flag up i surrender i surrender i i i understand that i am powerless i understand that you are in control i understand that your plans are better than mine i understand that even if i don't like it i don't want it it's uncomfortable i surrender to your will i surrender to I submit to your will, um, and I and, and and I started surrendering a different way. Before I used to always surrender every morning. Yeah, I surrender to your will today. Blah blah blah. But it was more like mouth to mouth, you know, just saying it out loud. He was showing me that I had to surrender in my heart, like literally take out my heart and say, "Here you go, Jesus, take it." And then you put it back the way you want it. You know what I mean? And I thought again at this stage he was mending it. And there was times that I would get hurt again, um, and and that wound would open up, and all oh, that blood would come back out, right? That hurt, but um, I surrendered. I mean, I asked for help. I even I felt like I was drowning, and I couldn't breathe. I think that was the moment when I the enemy was tempting me more, right? I think he got me at the most vulnerable stage. Guess what he does, right? He's a sneak, and um, and you should just drink. You know that if you drink, you'll numb your pain away. You know that if you drink, you're not going to feel that pain anymore. Just drink. And friends, whew, thank God I got out of that. So I surrender my will, my plans, my everything. Um, let's see what I have. Let me put my glasses on here. I surrender my, my will, which is, you know, to his. And I understood that... Um, 
that his plans were better and that brings me to jeremiah 29 11 right but i know i have for i know the plans that i have for you plans to prosper you plans of hope not to harm you you know i i stood on that i i stood that i know that i know that i know that his plans are better for me that takes me to number four he taught me how to be still right be still and know psalms 46 10 be still and know that papa god has me Woo! and he showed me how to be still in a totally different way i thought being still was just being in a quiet room and and and, and trying to take out my my thoughts or my emotions out and that's not stillness he taught me was you know because um being still he told me was an action action right it's a posture of surrendering laying down my own plans and desires ambitions fears hurts and pain to the feet of jesus it's releasing the need to control every little detail and trusting that god has far way better plans for me St being still is entering into his divine presence where i can find supernatural peace Whoa amazing so i learned to be still super amazing right number five letting go letting go of any control and letting control of others and their actions you know i don't have control of what whatever happened to me um what people do to me how they hurt me intentionally or not intentionally um we don't have control and and or, or control of or maybe wanting to control the future if i do this if i say that no 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 or if i run away if i do this no letting go of control which is very hard because i think at that point is like when you're ready to like move on right when he's trying to get you to that stage to move on right um and let go with peace and love because if i knew that if i didn't let go with love it means nothing it's like oh yeah well you know you know curse this person or curse that situation or whatever that's not doing with love and it says in the word that if you do anything without love it's nothing it's like you sound you sound like a clinging symbol quack, 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 quack. it's like it's just noise so i knew that i had to let go with love which means blessing the person blessing the situation and again to continue to trust god just let go let go and let god i let go i let go i let go and let god right amazing which will leads me to number six um serving i started to use my pain my testimony to starting to help and serve others and that's when i started to again you doing my channels and my podcast and my youtube channels and my instagram i started little by little coming out and 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 and, and testifying on my testimony and, and teaching on 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 on, on healing and 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 restoration and forgiveness and all that stuff even though i was still going through pain and just yesterday i was able to to minister to a friend of mine was actually going through the same thing that i just went through and i was like hello look at me like don't like like run run right um and 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 and, 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 and tell her obviously the truth listen it won't be easy it's gonna hurt trust me but it's so much worth it because god has a better plan and 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 you'll be stronger and and, and you can live your life i mean the way god is planning it for you not the way we want to control it right so um i started to notice that there were so many more women out there that were going through all these situations right and imagine this is just the beginning of what I'm doing. Imagine I'm actually writing my third book now, which I'm trying to get mom um, the title. It might be called um, "Blinded by Love" or, or or something. I don't know, but I'm actually writing my book already. You know, um, on this, which is amazing. Imagine how many people it could help. Even when I'm gone one day from this earth, it will continue to help others. Right? How Papa God miraculously Cinderella story <laughs> heals me. Re not restored me and renewed me um in three weeks and when when i kept seeing when i kept saying renewing is because you know god is not a person who just restores you and just mends you and then you know he can and will renew you completely to a completely different better person which is super amazing right number seven 
I turned my process of pain into gratitude. You know, you know, Papa God went to at one point, Holy Spirit told me, the faster you start turning all that complaining, all that sorrow, all that pain, all that grieving into gratitude, the faster you'll get out. The faster I could start working on your behalf, the faster I'll work on your battles, the faster I'll heal you, the faster when you turn this into gratitude. So I started to see and, and, and put in practice the stuff that I could be grateful for, which were many, you know, to the point like, God, thank you for giving me this place. You know, you know, you know, I could have been right now in, in someone's sofa, you know, because I didn't have a place to live. Right. I could be in my car, homeless. I could have been, um, I could have been drinking, relapsed, and 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 and, and you know, and, and died. Right? I could have. Um, thank you because I have a wonderful job. Thank you because I have an amazing boss. Thank you because I have. Um, because I feel healthy. Thank you because I mean, because I have a great son. Thank you because I have a mom who's with me by my side. I mean, I started to find every single little thing. Thank you because the hot shower, you know, it's so it's nice and strong, and 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 and, and I love when I take a shower there because I mean, it's hot water. How many people don't have hot water? I mean, I started being grateful for everything that, and and even even grateful for what I'm going through. Because I know that this also shall pass. Because, friends, let's, let's, let's get something clear here. Everything in life is temporary. Everything, okay? Meaning that our joy and, well, not the joy of the Lord, but meaning our happiness of the world. Anything that this world brings, because all this sorrow, all this pain, it comes from the world. It doesn't come from God, right? So even that is temporary. So I knew that this season of pain and, and all that stuff was eventually going to pass. I mean, yeah, of course, the enemy wants to tell you it's never going to pass. You're never going to get out of this. And, and and it could take, yeah, months and years. But again, when you do this process and when you have and you trust the Lord, look how quickly it could happen. Like miraculously, again, three weeks, right? So I turned all that into gratitude. And um, because of that... Um, discipline that I had with the Holy Spirit, it was nothing by myself, you know, I have no, I give no credit to myself, I was able to quickly get restored and get me stronger and wiser, and listen, my faith, friends, grew from a tiny, tiny little mustard seed when I started, because I told myself, I said, Papa God, I have a tiny, tiny little mustard seed of faith, but I'll give it to you, take it, and he grew that into a size of a lemon, which is amazing. Isn't it amazing? It's so amazing. <laughs> yes, friends. My joy was restored. My hope came back. You know, the hope of, of the hope with excitement of like, what's around the corner? Like, what's going to happen now? Because I know something amazing is about to happen to me. Hello. You know, after that, what I just went through, trust me. I know that Papa God is amazing. I know that he's great. I know that his plans are so much better for me. So I know that I know that I know. That whatever's around the corner is going to be amazing. Oh, before I forget, there's this song that keeps coming in my head. Um, you know that song that goes, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, was it? All of the obstacles. Da -da -da -da. I really don't you know the lyrics, but you kind of know, right? That's an amazing song. And I kept hearing that song just yesterday when I was about to get into this renewal. I was like, I can see clear. And that's how I feel now. Like, whew, the blinds were out of my eyes, right? Um, and, and I was like, I can see clearly. Now. Just just a couple of days ago, there was a storm here where I live here in South Florida. And you guys could see my videos when I was talking about, look at that storm. I'm going through a storm and we go through a storm, but I know that the sun will come out. And right now, as I'm talking, you know what I'm hearing right now? I hear birds. Can you hear them? Probably not. Well, I hear the birds chirping, singing. I guess because they heard me singing. Hmm. And the, the sun is out. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And so, friends, I will leave you with this that the Holy Spirit gave me this morning when I opened my Bible just to see. Um, I was going to do my Bible study, and it opened right in Philippines 1 2. And this, He gave this to me, and I'll give this to you, and I'll finish with this, friends. It says, Philippines 1 2. Now, go. 
May the blessings of God's divine grace and supernatural peace that flows from God, our wonderful Papa, and our Messiah, the Lord Yeshua, be upon your life. Amen. Friends, I hope this helped you. Um, I, you know, obviously there's a lot more in there, but this is something so briefly I wanted to, you know, not actually not make it that long, it's almost 30 minutes. But if you guys need, um, anything like anything more in depth of how I, I went through this how i got through this um definitely leave me some comments and i'll get right back to you um I'm, I'm here this is what i do i'm here to help and encourage and empower women and men to say listen anything is possible mark 9 23 anything is possible when you believe and i believed i chose to believe that that whatever was happening was going to be for my good um i know i still have you know to go through many other stages i know there's a process i still need to go through i know there's things i'm going to happen to go through but i know that that horrific hurricane stain is past is gone just the way he told me that's it the grievance gone the sorrow is done that's it you're done you season you live and i know that was coming up super amazing for me for my husband for my, my family for my surroundings for my everything i know super amazing and um i'm going to continue to share this journey with you guys to see where now god takes me because he gave me a super super amazing amazing vision last night a dream of what's coming up which i won't share with you yet you guys will know but i'm gonna wait obviously to manifest here in the physical because first it's in the spiritual and then it's in the physical but it's a super super amazing and um i'm super excited and i love you guys all Thank you for listening and I'm just here to say there's, you know, don't lose hope, cling to God, not to things, not to people. So just, just immerse yourself in your pain just with him. Friends, no one can help you. No one and nothing. Remember that everything that's out there is temporary fixes. The only one that could help you with anything, with a heartbreak, with anything in life is Papa God, Yeshua, my best friend, Holy Spirit. Love you, Holy Spirit. This one's for you. So, friends, to the next time. Shalom, shalom. Bye.